This was such a fun fight. This is a round of the year contender. I want everybody to bookmark this fight. I want you to save this fight, go back to it, revisit it in a couple of weeks so you can just understand how much of a treat that we were in when the Cuban Missile Crisis, Julian Marquez and Gregory Rodriguez decided, MMA? No, this isn't MMA. We're just going to slug it out. We're just going to brawl in the middle of this cage and whoever goes down first wins and Gregory Rodriguez got the nod. But is it fair for me to say, AJ, that if there was the number one way that I thought Gregory Rodriguez was, would lose this fight, it was fighting the way that he fought Julian Marquez in this fight, man. I don't understand it. Jiu-jitsu black belt, great grappler, well-rounded martial artist, and you say, I don't care about any of that. I'm just going to punch you until you fall. I get it. It's exciting. I get it. We're here to put on a show and, and do all that and get the bonus, and he got the bonus. But I felt like, I mean, bro, you uh, you can never advance to the way that I can see him. I don't think he can reach his potential if he doesn't utilize the jujitsu more. But being able to knock out Julian Marquez in the fashion that he did, man, he knocked him out maybe four times in the span of that fight. And then at the end of the day, folded him like a lawn chair. It was a beautiful thing to see. Hats off to uh, Julian Marquez because he put on a hell of a display of heart and toughness and, and just ferocity. But uh, yeah, Robocop, brother. He's the real deal. Like I said, I, underdog pick, but this was our lock of the night. So what do you make of it? Underdog pick, man. Lock of the night. This is the most entertaining three minutes in, in entire sports, man. You want to watch something fun, like Derek said, bookmark this fight, man. Because this this literally looks like both of these dudes. I don't know if you've ever been down to Austin, Texas, Derek. But we got a place called Sixth Street where you go down there, you're liable to get shot. It's kind of a dirty place. It's a grungy spot. You're going to get in a fight. And it looks like these two went down the night before, got involved in the crowd and said, oh, this is what Texas is about. Because that was an entertaining slugfest, man. That was not a fight. It was a very entertaining slugfest, which I we were all the opening night. Or uh, not the, uh, yeah, it was. No, no, it wasn't the opening fight. But still an entertaining scrap nonetheless, because the opening scrap was also entertaining. But man, this one, I, I think... Gregory Rodriguez, going back to what you're saying about him not utilizing his jiu-jitsu, I think it's strictly because he knows that the UFC is an opportunity for his jiu-jitsu is probably his career he's going to be banking on for for the rest of his life, whether it's teaching, coaching, uh, you know, whatever whatever the case he goes with the skill set he has. He, I feel like he always has it in his back pocket, so he may not be trying to utilize it a little bit right now, knowing that if I put on a show you know, and, and take this opportunity for what it is, I can make a lot more money doing that even if I get knocked out. What do you think? Well, I can say that he did use a little jujitsu in the fight, right? There was a point where he was trying to take Marquez's back. Marquez, he got up, uh, he stood up, he used the wall to scrape him off, and then they kind of pushed on from there. But I just feel like he is so athletic. He has uh, Rodolfo Vieta level jujitsu, brother. Like, that's how good he is. I just think you're going to run into another guy. Like, uh, who did he run into in the last one? Armin Petrosian, right? Who is just, he, can, he has a chin and he can strike you back and he can crack back and you're going to lose the fight. Even though it was a controversial, you know, split decision loss in his last one. I mean, he didn't need the judges in this one, man. How impressive was it that he, he put out Marquez like this? Nobody puts out Marquez like this. How impressive was that? Nobody puts out Marquez and nobody sleeps him like that either, man. He yeah. just, when I saw him go down like a bag of, like a bag of rocks, man. Yeah, very impressive. And the crazy thing is, I, I forget, I feel like Gregory Rodriguez, I say this a lot, man, he looks old, but I'm pretty sure he's still somewhat young, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, 30 bro. years old. This yeah. dude, man, he's got some power behind him and, and a few years to keep doing what he's doing. It's going to be a lot of fun, man. Very impressive fighter. Have I not been singing the man's praises since he got into the UFC? I saw him on the Contender Series when he lost to, and it's crazy, the dude that he lost to, Jordan Williams, right? The dude who was not even a real middleweight. He dropped down to multiweight after, and now he's not even in the UFC anymore. Like, it was kind of a flukish loss, but he came back. This is like a former LFA champion, bro. Gregory Rodriguez is the real deal. That's the whole point. But Julian Marquez, um, this is another one of those spots, too, man, where he could have been a little smarter with his game plan, too. Now, this is, <clears throat> I want your opinion right here, AJ, and this is going to be not controversial, but I just want your opinion on the nature of coaches giving advice to the general populace, even though they're biased, right? Even though they state they're biased, still giving out betting advice to the general populace. So, you know, we love this man on this program because he's a great, phenomenal coach, but James Krause. He has his new, like, you know, he does his betting stuff and throws it on TikTok and Instagram and all that stuff. And James Cross had kind of noted, he was like, hey, man, I just don't see any way that Julian Marquez can lose this fight. He said, there is no way that there, that like Gregory Rodriguez has an easy path to winning. I think everything Marquez does is better, cleaner, faster, or whatever the case may be. And then you see the outcome of the fight and you're just like, hmm, that's your boy. Obviously, you're coaching him, right? So, you, of course, you're going to say that. 
But AJ, this is the nature that I've realized in MMA, man. You can't trust anybody, even if they're high level athletes, even if they're the Conor McGregor's, even if they're the Usman's, it doesn't matter because loyalty blinds all, man. Emotion blinds all. And that's what you're going to do. You're going to rock with your boy and you're going to justify any excuse in your head to be like, nah, my boy's going to knock his ass out. Of course, bro. Why? Because we trained it. What do you mean? But then you fight Robocop and on a short notice replacement too, let's not forget Marquez was supposed to fight Wellington Terman. Short notice replacement, Rodriguez step, steps in and he just fucking crumbles you like a bag of chips bro you know what i mean like you just crumble done whatever so for coaches and people who are invested emotionally should they be giving advice in the first place no no way man that's one of those ones where you're uh you're too close to the forest so you can't see the trees or whatever the saying is you know because that's one of those ones where you're you think you're locked in you're ready to go you've done all the training in the world your boy's gonna smash this dude when he walks in and then not necessarily the case, man. You know, you, when, you, when you're in there training and, and coming from a coach, man, in my own self, of, to my athletes, I can always see those same things where I'm 100% confident this is going to happen. And then you get overlooked. You know, you, your, your own ego gets a little bit hurt whenever you see something like this happen. So I think this can be a big learning moment also for James Krause if, if you can always change it into that. Because coaching, you're always learning as well. So I, and, and to that point, man, if I'm ever uh, – if one of my uh, students or athletes ever fighting – yeah, probably don't take my betting advice right there, too, because I'm going to be a little biased as well. Absolutely. So I just wanted to kind of point that out there because uh, Julian Marquez, man, he put up a very valiant effort, but he did get outstruck, man, 50 to 13. Man, it was a very one-sided affair over here. However, we know the case. He'll be back, man. This is not without a doubt. This is just a rough matchup right here, but Julian Marquez is still one of the baddest men to do it. And I would still like to see both of these dudes fight a ranked opponent next, both of them. Not just one, not just Robocop, both of them. Marquez is a beast, bro. So moving on to the next one, man. This